you're going to find this very interesting. Now, when we do a YouTube teaching, we'll do something prophetic. We'll do something practical, spiritual warfare. And a lot of times we'll go into history and we'll show you some amazing stories or secrets or parallels of ancient history. Well, this is something dealing with the United States and we've called it the secrets of the presidents. Now I'm going to read this because I want to make sure I get the names correct with what this particular thing about them was that very few people know about. George Washington had had a mouthful of dentures. However, he had his horse's teeth brushed every day. Okay, whatever, whatever, uh, whatever you need to do. Andrew Jackson, I'm, I'm sorry, John Quincy Adams read the Bible through from, co from cover to cover every single year. Andrew Jackson, on the other hand, had a parrot that spoke, and we have an African gray, and men, they'll repeat anything after a while if you keep repeating it but they had to remove the parrot from Andrew Jackson's funeral because he kept using profanity while the funeral was going on at the White House. Zachary uh, Taylor, was n he never voted in any presidential election ever, but yet the American people voted him as president of the United States. That's almost like saying that uh, they voted in a pastor that's never preached. You know, that's just a little metaphor there. James Garfield was shot and uh, the doctors kept searching and digging for the bullet on four different occasions. And that's what eventually killed the man, not the, not the gunshot itself. Theodore Roosevelt loved hunting. He was an outdoorsman, as most people know who've studied his life. And uh, four mountain lions attacked his dog and killed it. And he took a knife and went after the mountain lions and killed them. Sounds like a David and... Uh, killing a bear and killing a lying story that you read about in First Samuel. Franklin Roosevelt uh, on vacation would always mail uh, his wife's dog's postcards. Okay, I guess the dog could read. I'm not sure. Uh, then we have Richard Nixon. His mom wanted him to be a Quaker missionary because they were of the Quaker religious background. Uh, he wanted instead a job with the FBI and got turned down. So they actually turned down a man that would one day become the president of the United States. Uh, one of the more interesting things, and we did a YouTube video on this, but I want to share this with you in this setting because it's very interesting, is something which was known as the zero curse. At a certain point in American history, every president that was ever elected on a year ending in zero ended up dying in office either early in his administration or while he served in office as president of the United States. Now, the legend is connected to uh, the stories that are associated with how this happened. Many, many years ago, there was a man by the name of Harrison. And during uh, Harrison's time, he arrived on the scene and uh, began to take the land from the Native American Indians and began to actually slaughter them by the thousands. Um, the Shawnee Indians, however, had a chief known as the prophet. This was a nickname they gave him because he would see into the future. Uh, this prophet had a brother named Tecumseh and they were leaders in the land and among the Shawnee tribe at the same time when the government of the United States was attempting to take the land from the First Nations people. Harrison moved in with 1,000 soldiers and began to kill some of our First Nations people of the Shawnee tribes and other tribes. And so the legend became that the prophet's brother Tecumseh cursed the leaders, the, the, the men that would lead this nation, which was the United States of America. Now, this is a, um, a writing from the sources, the presidents by Bill Harris. Here's what it says, and I'm quoting. By the time Harrison arrived on the scene, most of the Indians had been reduced to poverty. Their hunting lands had already been carved up by the new farmers in their midst, and they were regularly victimized by traders. Harrison had, had added more than 50 million acres of public land. The Indians weren't paid, of course, but the official government price to white settlers was $2 an acre. After the Battle of, Tip, of Tippecanoe, later in the 1830s, the Shawnee chief Tecumseh sent a message to Harrison by a released prisoner. Quote, Harrison will not win this year to be the great chief. And he was referring there not great chief over the Indian tribes, but great chief over the United States, which would be president. If he wins, he will die in office. Every 20 years, the leader will die to remember the death of my people. 
Now that was called the zero curse every 20 years. So every, this, is the, this is the way it was worded. Every 20 winners, the day, days of the great chief they elect will be cut short. This is the quote that they have in history. In 1840, William Harrison was elected and on inauguration day caught a cold and died 30 days later. This was the man who before he became president, as you know, took over the Indian land, killed many, many of them. 20 years later, in 1860, a zero year, Abraham Lincoln was elected. And as you know, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated in Ford's Theater. Um, uh, I think it was his second term. In 1880, James Garfield was president and three months later was shot at a railroad station in Washington, D.C. Now, what do they have in common? They were all elected as president on the zero year. And there is a space of 20 years, uh, the exact amount of time that the alleged zero curse was set by Tecumseh. In, uh, in 1900, William McKinley, president, was elected. But in the Pan-American Expo in New York, while shaking hands, he was shot and died of gangrene. 20 years later, in 1920, William Harding was elected president. But in 1923, during his first term, he was on a speaking tour, became violently ill and died. His wife would not permit an autopsy and there was suspicion that perhaps he had been poisoned. In 1940, Roosevelt was elected president. Once again, 20 years after the previous president died in office. <clears throat> In, that was elected in 1920. But in his fourth term, because he was the only president elected that many terms, in his fourth term, he died. Now, someone said one time, what if the other man running against him had been elected? Would he have died? And the answer is yes. Running against him uh, was Wendell Wilkie, and he also died in 1944. So either, either way, uh, the president would have died in office. In 1960, John F. Kennedy was elected president of the United States. Gordon Lindsay, who is out of, whose ministry is headquartered in Dallas, Texas, today known as Christ for the Nations, wrote a book that I have in my office, a small 32-page booklet called, Will the President Elected in 1960 Die in Office? And he was basing it on the historical facts of the alleged zero curse. He predicted that unless there was a change that the president elected would die. Oddly enough, with the headquarters of Gordon Lindsay's ministry in Dallas, Texas, John F. Kennedy, elected in 1960, was shot in Dallas, Texas from a book depository as he was driving in an open limo. Now, in 1980, which was 20 years later, I knew about the zero curse and had taught it occasionally, but Ronald Reagan was running for president. And oddly enough, in 1981, in the month of March, an assassination attempt took place on the life of Ronald Reagan. And the bullet that ricocheted off of the limousine uh, came within an inch of his heart. In other words, he was an inch away from possibly dying. Reagan wrote about being on the gurney in the hospital. And of course he was praying and someone put their hand on his shoulder and we turned, there was no one there. And he believed that he was guided by divine providence and God let him live and kept him alive for a purpose. We do know that purpose without a doubt was the fall of communism with the assistance of the Pope and also Mikhail Gorbachev. Now, when George W. Bush was elected in 2000, there was also the idea that possibly something would happen in relation to the zero curse. However, Bush served eight years and nothing took place and he is still alive today, at least at the time of this taping. Well, then when Biden was elected in 2020, the question became, will the zero curse affect him? Could he possibly die in office? Now, up to this point, if I've totaled this correctly, there's somewhere in the neighborhood of seven presidents that fell under this. God has said in the Old Testament that a nation would be punished seven times for their iniquity. It's possible that this curse has run its course and has now been broken since the presidents that have been elected on zero years up to this point have remained in office or exited their office and were still living. However, it's very interesting to note that every president that died on a zero year came from territory and actually was born in or uh, was a senator or something of that nature from the territory where the Indian tribes lived and where they were greatly persecuted during the 1800s and some even in the 1900s. History is very interesting. And so these are some of the strange facts involving the United States presidents. If you enjoy this kind of teaching and you learn something, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. And please remember this at perrystone.org. 
We are expanding our resources. We are expanding our information. And I'd like for you to go there sometime. And also please subscribe to the YouTube channel so that we can bring more of these types of interesting teachings to you. There's always something special that we offer our viewers if you're interested at the end of my teaching. So stay tuned. Please give me your undivided attention. Many months ago, I began to hear secular economists announce a new global reset was coming. That's when I heard this phrase in my spirit, the American apocalyptic reset. For several weeks, I woke up early and began receiving a series of stunning prophetic downloads that I penned and now have placed them all in my brand new prophetic book, America's Apocalyptic Reset. This book is a must read for all Christians, for all of those who love Bible prophecy, for conservative Americans and American patriots. The 19 chapters go extremely deep into exposing the agenda now being secretly plotted and to be publicly forced upon us, the American people, and how we can counter it. I discovered some very stunning ancient prophetic parallels and patterns, some that go back 4,000 years that are repeating themselves in the United States right now. I deal with America's great Babel reset and the planned persecution of Christians, America's self-curse that will eventually bring judgment upon the nation, the coming Jezebel clash, the woman who will be president, how should we act and wisely resist corrupt governments. I reveal the unique Silicon Valley parallels and also go into the plans to bankrupt, then reset America economically. Also, I talk about how to function when the church must go underground. I received a very unique revelation concerning President Trump and a pattern that's found in history. There's a chapter also that I deal with how did the prophets get it wrong and so much more. Ladies and gentlemen, this is probably the most significant prophetic book in the history of my ministry, especially in the time that we're in, but that's not all. I'm also including my most recent inside information prophetic briefing on two audio CDs. It's two hours in length, and I will release detailed information that I cannot, and I want you to hear me, I cannot, nor will I, share this on social media or on television, as absolutely in the climate that we're now in, a lot of this information would be targeted for being blocked and banned if it was made public and not done in this private setting that we're doing it in. These two hours contain biblical, political, national, and international revelation and information that I am sure that many of you have not been aware of. It is for truth lovers only. I want you to order right now this prophetic resource package, my brand new book, The Apocalyptic Reset, and the two-hour prophetic CDs by going online at perrystone.org or calling 1-888-21-BREAD or write me at Perry Stone P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. Now, we're making this available for your donation of $35 or more, and you can request the offer APR-140. That's APR-140. I'm going to unmask the radical globalists and individuals who have set out to oppose and silence Christians, silence patriots, and shut the mouth of conservatives. And we will show you in the book what we can do when we unite together. We are looking forward to getting this into your hands. If you enjoyed this YouTube content, there's an important website you should know about, perrystone.org. Perrystone.org is an essential resource for the latest books, audiovisual presentations, and digital products from Perry Stone Ministries, resources that cover the same kinds of topics discussed in the program you just watched. Stop in and see all that's available at perrystone.org.